one thing I'm 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 proud about uh, in, in my work on the Almond Brothers is the the book title, uh, Play All Night, Dwayne Almond and the Journey to Fillmore East, and and the reason is is because of the fact that that is is, a, is an expression that someone yelled out, uh, a dude yelled out um, during You Don't Love Me at Fillmore East, and it, it ended up on the record. It's at about 16 minutes, 18 seconds or so on the versions I've been listening to for the last uh, 10 years or so, maybe more, but toward the toward the latter part, latter end of the song. And, and it's, you know, what I love about it and, and the title, uh, because it's what differentiates Play All Night from anything else that's ever been written about the Allman Brothers, and, and I know that because I think about it a lot, but is the, is the fact that it represents the fans' experience with the music of the Allman Brothers Band. And what's really interesting to me, um, as I think about this, you know, a lot, and, and I know that enough of you enjoy it, because I get lots of responses from this or over on my blog at uh, Long Live the ABB. And um, it's all, uh, uh, people dig it. So I, I'm just gonna keep on talking about it, because honestly, I'm just really sorting shit out for myself. But as I mentioned, the thing about the book that I'm proud of is the fact that I used a ton of sources that were from fans. And a lot of times it was just everyday people who were writing a lot of times in college newspapers, even sometimes in high school newspapers. Um, you know, rock journalism, criticism, et cetera, was very, very, very new in the, or in the latter part of the 1960s as the Allman Brothers Band were, were coming up. And they did have some very famous pieces written on them in the early era, and actually an infamous piece by Grover Lewis in Rolling Stone that ran right after Dwayne died. Um, uh, they, had, they were featured in Cream, and you know they, they had been featured by, by writers, but, but really, if you want to find out how, uh, uh, um, how they hit, at least, at least this is how I f figured it out, was just to read the reviews, read what people said about um, their albums. So that brings me to today, which is uh, I post shit on social media all the time. It's on all the different channels, and I really don't do a deep dive into it anywhere else but here or over on the blog because, I don't know, it takes a lot of time. But I just, you know, wanted to sort of, I wanted to share one today, that, and I really want to get a little bit into detail on it. And, and um, it gets to play all night, which is why I wanted to throw that out there. So pause just a second. I'm going to switch out and tell you what we're going to talk about today. All right, this is this is the beginnings album, um, and it, it's the Allman Brothers. It came out after Eat a Peach, before Brothers and Sisters, and, and certainly after Fillmore East. This is a repackaged version of the debut album and Idle Wild South, the third consecutive uh, double album that Capricorn released on the Allman Brothers uh, in, in nineteen. I guess it was seventy three. It might have been seventy two. I don't know Gary McKee who's the author of, of this quote I'm about to say, but he wrote uh, a column called Earwax, kind of interesting, um, for the University of Nebraska Omaha paper called The Gateway. So this is an April 1973 review. And as I read through this, I, I just, I, you know, my first thought is, yep, I'm that dude. And turns out McKee is too, which you're going to see in just a second. And, and, and I bring this up because in this era when folks were writing uh, certainly in the college newspapers and and even the you know profession the professional journalists the professional critics um there was a measure of fandom um that that was uh there uh expressed i guess is the best way to say it i don't know that that um and as as i'm saying this and i'm, I'm processing thinking out loud is i'm realizing it perhaps that is one of the things that separates rock journalism or music journalism from some other other parts of journalism. I'm not a journalist, though. I'm a historian. And what I'm looking at in the long tail of, uh, of, of the Allman Brothers story, if you will, are, are, you know, this is how one person, college student, is writing about the Allman Brothers band now four years into their tenure and uh, what it means. I just found it very, very fascinating. Um, and you'll see at the end why uh, I brought Play All Night up. So here's, here's how he starts. Amidst the almost Ridiculous proliferation of group cult followings. An Almond Brothers band freak stands out as unique. He's the kind of guy who buys a minimum of 50 albums a year, as opposed to, say, a John Denver fan who might buy one a month. Chances are he's dug into the kind of music that the Almonds have derived from, country and blues, country and Chicago blues, rather than sandwiches records between the latest copies of Slade and Uriah Heep. Side note, Bob's note, um, why would anybody put the Allman Brothers band between the letters S and U in your records? Anyway, 
Um, back to back to his quote. But the thing that grabs me about these freaks is the extent they get into this band's music. It goes beyond into just having copies of all of their albums. Some of these nuts can hum every guitar solo that Dwayne Allman or Dickie Betts ever turned out. Note, I am guilty. Guilty as charged. And when a group of them get together to play records, they never fail to end the session with the Almonds. Nothing else will do. Ditto on that one, and that's a shout out to all my ABB brothers and sisters out there, all my homies. And this is what McKee says. Alas, I am one such nut. If you're a true believer, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't dug on him yet, this set that he's talking about beginnings is the perfect intro. I almost envy you the thrill of hearing them for the first time. And if you don't like this album, you better go down to the morgue and turn yourself in. And he finishes with this. I keep remembering the cat in the crowd on the Almonds Live album, who during one of Dwayne's solos yelled out, play all night. All I can add to that is amen. So here's to the fan that uh, uh, made himself immortal on this record. Here's to uh, Gary McKee and uh, thousands, millions of us others who, who recognize it. And is certainly uh, to Dwayne Allman and the Allman Brothers Band for giving us all this killer music for me and us to discuss. Long live the Allman Brothers Band. <laughs> 